Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at the multiband Hass effect by Blue Man Goo. And this is a stereo widener. Now they already have, Blue Man Goo already have a stereo widener. I think it's called Stereo Lag and it's a free app. So you might ask why on earth would you want to pay for this if you can get that free? Well, first of all, this is multiband. The other one is not. Secondly, and maybe most importantly, this one can also widen mono signals. The other one only works on stereo. So in the video today, at first I'm going to let you hear it on a few different sound sources. I'm going to talk about when you might want to use this and when you might prefer to use a chorus, which you probably already have, right? And you might think, well, that's what I normally use to widen my guitar sounds, for example. Why do I need this? Um, and then I'm going to just take a quick look at the app and see how to use it. I think this video will not be more than about 10 minutes. It's a pretty simple app. Now, I have three copies of this to give away to subscribers to the channel, thanks to Blue Mango. For details of how to win, look at the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. And the instructions are there, okay? Now, this only applies if you're watching this in the first two days, more or less, of release of the video. Um, the winners are usually announced two days after I bring a video out. So if you're watching it at some point in the future, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of these kind of giveaways, because I often have apps to give away. Okay, so without further ado, let's just hear this. Now, here we have an instance of Blue Mangoo's I Fretless Guitar, and it's playing this nice um, classical guitar sound, right? So this is the original sound. Now, this is stereo. So for the purposes of this video, I'm actually just gonna convert it to mono so that I can let you hear how this can widen a mono signal. Okay, so now I'll apply the Hass effect. Let's see, okay. I'll just compare those again. So you can see that's thinner. And this is thicker, right? It has that stereo quality. Now let's see what it would be like to apply chorus to this. And here I'm using FAC Chorus, which is a great chorus. Now, do you like this on this particular sound? Personally, this is a sound where I would prefer to use the Hass effect because this has this has that kind of modulated sound that to me sounds better on an electric guitar. This is thicker, but it no longer really sounds anything like a classical guitar, right? And that's not the fault of, you know, Fred Anton Carvest's chorus. It's just the nature of chorus. This is... This is thicker, but it's really natural. So to me, that is the main use case of this for widening acoustic sounds. For something like synths, you might just want to use a chorus. Uh, let's see, let's see. For example, here I have an instance of Flinth being played by ArpBud, which I did a video on a couple of days ago. Okay, so we can see from the oscilloscope that this is mono. Now, see, look, that's what stereo would look like. So let's let's hear it now. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to put on the chorus. Now, I mean, it's going to depend really on the song, but for me, I quite like the chorus on something like this. Now, I had some discussion with Hans from Blue Mango about when you might prefer to use a chorus and when you might prefer to use this. And I think what he said is very valid. Chorus might be really good on a lead instrument, and I would say particularly on something that maybe you want a slightly synthetic sound on. So again, maybe not a kind of nylon string guitar sound. Um, so chorus might be good on that. But for example, for thickening things that are in the background, or for thickening something that is in the foreground, but you really want to keep it natural sounding and not modulated, then that's where the, the Haas effect would shine. Okay, let's listen to it on one other thing. Uh, let's listen to it on some just uh, sampled vocal, right? So this is from one of those Svon packs. I think it's the memory pack. And the, this is a pack, I've mentioned it in videos before, that just has a ton of really great samples from old movies. So first let's listen to this. And again, you can see it's mono, right? But in the Odyssey, Ulysses was the only one who got back home alive. His whole crew was lost. But it... Okay, so let's hear it with the Haas effect on. His whole crew was lost. But in the Odyssey, Ulysses was the only one who got back home alive. His whole crew was lost. But in the... So I really like that with the stereo widening applied, actually. Okay, so that's um, just a few examples of different use cases. Now let's look at... Let's look at how to use this. And let's see, first of all, the thing that everybody always asks. Are the parameters exposed? Multiband Haas effect parameters. Okay, so we've got really quite a lot of stuff there. Let's see. Cut off one, cut off two, cut off three hertz. Band one solo bypass enable lag time band two. So a lot of stuff exposed here. I'm not sure if everything's exposed, but definitely parameters are exposed, right? So that's great. It passes that test. Fantastic. Um, okay, so. So first of all, we have the multiband thing and we can solo individual bands. We can turn individual bands on and off with these. So let's just get a little example of that. Let me use AUM's keyboard for this, actually. Actually, no, that's too loud. No velocity on that. Okay. So you see, here we basically have a low, um, a low mid, high mid, and high. Of, of course, you can adjust these. So I mean, if you drag this all the way over here, that's no longer going to be low, right? So it's all adjustable. You can also press X, right, to cut bands out. And then you can press this plus to add them back in. Right. So I'm going to open just a fresh instance to get things back the way they normally would be when you open a fresh instance. Right. Okay. So you can see at the moment it's divided into these four bands, but everything's off down here. Okay, so let's just see. Let me play this on the keyboard. So, for example, we could do it like this. Now 
the more we put it over here, the wider it's going to get. And you can see we're only applying the effect currently to these two. So here, this is on, but we're not actually applying any of the has effect. Same up here. So Hans from Blue Mango has a pretty good video up explaining how this works and the difference between using this and uh, using, for example, just panning. And um, what he mentions is that this basically works by creating small delays, right? So that's what we're seeing here. It's a delay time. Um, but as he mentions in the video, when you have low sounds, because they're going at slow speeds anyway, delaying them doesn't really create very perceptible changes. So we don't really get much by playing around with this. I'll show, I'll show you an example of that. You see, we're not really, not really hearing it there. But if I do it here, you see, we start to getting something there. So this is, this is a very good effect to apply to the mid range bands. And that's why it's nice to have it multiband. So here we can turn bands on and off. Okay, so that's basically like a mute button. So you can see there's very little going on in the high there. Okay, we can solo. And then we can drag, right, to get things exactly the way we want them. So we can solo two at the same time. So you can solo them and you can play around, get everything exactly the way you want it. Double clicking here will reset. So let's say I drag this over here, double click to reset. Now, if we put higher values on the delays here, you can see that it actually becomes something like a delay. So if you're just wanting a widening effect, you're going to want something smaller than that. And you can see as well here that the knobs are exponential. So for example here, it looks like we've gone kind of more than halfway uh, in the full direction this knob can go, but it's just reading 31 milliseconds. And then here it's 250, so that's good because it gives us more accuracy around the lower delay times, which is really what we're going to be using when we're playing with this app in general. I wouldn't use this for a, a stereo delay. I would use Blue Mango have a good stereo delay effect. I used it in my last video. It has this mono button here. So you can quickly compare, but that does seem to take quite a lot of volume off. So it doesn't sound like a very fair comparison because once you take volume off something, it always sounds pretty bad. The louder things are almost always going to sound better. So if you really want a fair comparison, you're going to kind of have to go in and bypass. The only problem is uh, when you bypass, uh, it. It, 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 this stereo thing, the Haas effect, ends up sounding not very good because this is louder. So you maybe need to take this volume down a little bit. And then bring it up a bit to get a fair comparison. So there you go, everybody. A short one today. Don't forget, as I said, got a chance to win three copies of the app to give away. Look at the comment section, the pinned comment for details. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Good luck.